This is going to be a study about Old Testament salvation and answering the question, were Old Testament saints saved just like we are in the New Testament? And when I first got saved, one of the first questions I had was how were people saved in the Old Testament? I had never even read much of the Bible, but I knew that Jesus didn't die until the New Testament. And actually, the New Testament doesn't start until Jesus gave up the ghost. I didn't know that then, but I found, out, found that out later on. And I knew people in the Old Testament didn't know who Jesus Christ was. I heard people keep saying people in the Old Testament were saved by looking forward to the cross, like we are saved by looking back at the cross. That sounded so catchy and good. So I took that belief myself, and when that question arose, I used the same answer. People were saved by looking forward to the cross. I never studied out this subject because that cute little phrase took away all need to study. It is kind of like the lazy way out. And every time I would ask that question to someone, they would say that same answer to me. And how easy the, it would be if that were true. You wouldn't have to study out the dispensations or the covenants. You could just tell the person that we're saved by looking forward to the cross. And I'm going to show you with the Bible that that isn't true. People in the Old Testament didn't look forward to the cross. And people will pitch a fit over this if they find out you don't believe that they were saved by looking forward to the cross. This is kind of like one of the unpardonable sins among many Christians and they will break fellowship with you over this and call you a heretic. If a person believes people in the Old Testament are saved by looking forward to the cross, that is fine with me. I don't care. I don't break fellowship with them over it. I don't think they are a heretic and I don't believe they aren't a Bible believer. I know plenty of people who believe the Bible who believe completely different than me on this subject. They were just taught wrong and never studied into it otherwise. And it was only by the grace of God that I didn't keep believing the same way. I realized I could easily still be believing people were saved by looking forward to the cross. So I show grace towards these people who disagree, just like they should show grace to me, even though I disagree completely with them. I mean... We all agree people in the church age we are in now are saved by grace through faith without works by believing on Jesus Christ. And we're only saved through his precious blood. We're not saved by works at all in this church age we are in now. So why break fellowship? But I'm going to get into the reasons now why I don't believe people in the Old Testament were saved by looking forward to the cross. The first reason why I believe people were not saved, just like us in the Old Testament, is because they didn't believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. The disciples didn't even understand what Jesus was talking about. So how would Adam, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Ezekiel, Daniel, and whoever else in the Old Testament understand the death, burial, and resurrection? There are many pictures and types of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. But the Old Testament saints didn't recognize them because they didn't have the revelation of the New Testament like we have. And 2 Corinthians 3.14 says, But their minds were blinded. For until the day remaineth the same veil and taken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. The Old Testament saints were blinded to many of the prophecies about Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Simon Peter, one of the disciples who walked and talked with Jesus Christ and had the entire Old Testament to read, didn't even realize that Jesus was going to be crucified, buried, and resurrected. Look at Mark chapter 8 verse 31 through 33. It says, And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he spake that saying openly. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. 
But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. If Peter was saved by looking forward to the cross, why did Peter do what he did in Mark eight thirty one through 33? Why did he say, Be it far from thee? Why didn't he agree with him and say, I know, Lord, you're going to die, you're going to be buried, and you're going to rise again the third day, and I'm putting my faith in that to save me. He didn't say that. And then in John 18, 8 through 10, it says, Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore you seek me, let these go their way, that the saying might be fulfilled which he spake of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. If Peter knew he was saved by looking forward to the cross, then why did he try to stop the soldiers from taking Jesus? And then in Luke 24, 6 through 11, it says, He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. Now look at verse 11. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. The disciples thought that the resurrection was an idle tale, and Peter even wondered what happened to Jesus Christ when he went in and looked in the sepulcher. In verse 12 it says, Then arose Peter, and ran into the sepulcher, and stooping down he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. While reading this, we wonder why the disciples were so stupid. But they didn't have the revelation that we have now. We can go back and read the Old Testament and see tons of prophecies that point to Jesus Christ, but the Old Testament saints didn't see it. And if you go down to verses 25 through 27, you will see Jesus had to start at Moses and the prophets and explain to them the scriptures concerning himself. And it says, Then he said unto them, O fools! And slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. If people understood and believed and were looking forward to the cross, then why did Jesus have to explain at the beginning from Moses and all the prophets? If you apply the whole Bible to yourself doctrinally and the, apply the whole Bible to Simon Peter doctrinally, then you make Peter a lost man. 2 Corinthians 4.3 says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. But Peter wasn't lost. Even though he didn't know the gospel that we know today, the death, burial, and resurrection, Peter was saved, he just wasn't saved by looking forward to the cross. Jesus makes it clear that none of the disciples were lost except Judas Iscariot in John seventeen twelve, He said, I have lost none but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. In Luke eighteen thirty one, Jesus gives the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection. Our gospel for today, which is in 1 Corinthians 15, is the death, burial, and resurrection. And Luke 18, 31 through 34 says, Then he took unto him the twelve, and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked, and spitefully entreated, and spitted on. And they shall scourge him, and put him to death, and the third day he shall rise again. And they understood none of these things, and this saying was hid from them, neither knew they the things which were spoken. After reading this, I can't say with an honest heart that they were saved by looking forward to the cross. They didn't even understand what he was saying. 
When we read things like this in the Gospels, it makes the disciples look stupid. But they just didn't have the revelation we have. They weren't stupid. They couldn't have been saved the same way. All the Old Testament saints eventually got to heaven because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But how they got the blood applied to them was different. In the Old Testament, they did what God said to do, and that is what got them to paradise or Abraham's bosom. After Jesus had been crucified, buried and resurrected, and the blood was shed, they then were allowed to enter into the third heaven and had Jesus Christ's blood applied to them. So it is true no one gets there without the blood of Jesus Christ, but how they even got to paradise or Abraham's bosom was not by looking forward to the cross. And then Mark 9, 30 through 32 says, And they departed thence, and passed through Galilee, and he would not that any man should know it. For he taught his disciples, and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. Now look at 32. But they understood not that saying, and were afraid to ask him. They didn't understand the death, burial, and resurrection, were even afraid to ask. So once again it says they didn't understand, and now look at Mark 16, 9. It says, Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him, as they mourned and wept, and they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that he appeared in another form unto two of them, as they walked and went into the country, and they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. So once again they didn't even believe. And again in Luke nine forty three through 45 and they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. But while they were wondered, every one at all things which Jesus did, he said unto his disciples, Let these sayings sink down into your ears, for the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. But they understood not this saying, and it was hid from them, that they perceived it not, and they feared to ask him of that saying. So they didn't even understand what he was talking about. The, the disciples weren't even called Christians because they were called Christians first at Antioch in Acts chapter 11. Jesus even lets Peter know that the way of salvation is going to change and he is going to have to be converted. In Luke 22, 31 through 32 it says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. By seeing these clear verses, you should drop the tradition. And that's all this is, is a tradition of believing people were saved by looking forward to the cross. I'm not sure where the tradition started, but you can clearly see the scriptures don't teach this, that they were saved by looking forward to the cross. Just be honest with yourself and don't try to make yourself believe it like I tried to make myself believe that people were saved by looking forward to the cross. Because all of my favorite preachers and the Bible teachers I was reading at that time and commentators said they were saved by looking forward to the cross. It doesn't matter what all the great men of God from the old days taught. What does the Bible teach? What have these verses been showing you? The Old Testament thing, uh, people didn't understand a lot of the things we understand now. And these mysteries were revealed to Paul, and he revealed them to us. So if it wasn't even revealed until Paul, then how was the disciples, the Old Testament saints, and people like Daniel, Ezekiel, Hosea, anybody from the Old Testament, how were they saved by looking forward to the cross? Look at Ephesians 3, 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God 
given unto me by the effectual working of his power. So God had some things hidden to people back then that are now revealed to us. The principalities and powers probably didn't even realize what the crucifixion was all about. And 1 Corinthians 2, 7-8 says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of the world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. It is so plain that a lot of things weren't revealed to the prophets. Even the prophets who wrote the very prophecies of Jesus. Look at 1 Peter 1.10. It says, Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you, which the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire look into. Notice it says in verse 12, Unto whom it was revealed, that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things. The prophets wrote down some things that they had no idea what they were writing because God hadn't revealed it to them. They may have wrote down the prophecies of Jesus Christ and in the stories, there may have been pictures and types of Jesus Christ. But the verse said, Unto whom it was revealed, that not unto themselves. But it's revealed to us. And the next reason I don't believe people in the Old Testament were saved just like people in the New Testament is because they were not sealed with the Holy Spirit. All born-again Christians are sealed with the Holy Spirit. We couldn't lose the Holy Spirit if we wanted to. Look at these verses. 2 Corinthians one twenty two, Who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Ephesians one thirteen, In whom ye also trusted, after ye, that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. This is different in the Old Testament because the Holy Spirit could depart from them. 1 Samuel 16.14 says, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And then David in Psalms 51.11, Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And that wouldn't be a good pray prayer for us to pray, because God already let us know we can't lose the Holy Spirit. The Lord even departed from Samson in the book of Judges. Judges 16.20, it says, And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. So, Old Testament saints weren't sealed. New Testament saints are sealed. Another reason I don't believe salvation is the same in the Old Testament is because they had their own righteousness. And in the New Testament, we have Jesus Christ's righteousness. Romans 10.3 says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. We can't establish our own righteousness. We have to get it from God when we are born again. Without Christ's righteousness, we will go to hell. Romans 3.21 says, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Notice the words, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, showing that before that keeping the law was involved in someone's righteousness. You say, well, no one could keep the law. But Paul says this in Philippians 3, 6, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. So before Paul was born again, he was blameless when it came to the law. No one ever completely kept all the commandments, but when a man broke one, he would offer a sacrifice and it would atone for him. He would then be blameless. He would have his sins covered and forgiven but not cleared. But now, 
If we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and His precious blood to save us, we can be saved and have eternal life without doing any works, and our righteousness doesn't come by keeping the law, and our sins aren't just covered, but gone completely. And that wasn't so in the Old Testament, because Exodus 34, 7 says that they were not cleared. It says they got forgiveness, and that by no means would clear the guilty. And Romans 10, 4 says, For Christ is the end of the law of righteousness to everyone that believeth. The verse is so plain. Christ is the end of the law for what? He's the end of the law for righteousness. Showing someone back there got their righteousness from keeping the law. Look at Deuteronomy 6.25, And it shall be our righteousness, if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he hath commanded us. Even Noah and Job before the law had their own righteousness. Ezekiel 14.14, 14, Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. Now our righteousness comes by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 4, 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. It comes down to that everyone in the Old Testament got to the third heaven where God is through the blood of Jesus Christ, but until Jesus died and shed his blood, they had to stay in paradise or Abraham's bosom. And they got to Abraham's bosom by doing what God said. God told different people to do different things. Yes, we know that God changes not, but God deals with people differently throughout time. Hebrews 1.1 1, 1 says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. And yes, grace was always involved in people being able to get righteousness and salvation just like Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Without grace, people would have just went to hell no matter what. Without God's mercy, people would have went to hell and, and burned forever. It comes down to how did God dispense His grace to different people. It couldn't have been just like He does now because I've showed you the differences, very plain differences that you can see if you'll just not get mad and have an open mind and not just shut me off because I'm not saying what all the, your, your old commentators said. And we can't just take the easy way out and say people were saved by looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament. Another reason salvation is different in the Old Testament is because people didn't get spiritually circumcised. In the church age, God performs an operation on the born-again believer where he gets his soul and his spirit cut loose from his sinful flesh. In Colossians 2.11 it says, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. When people sinned in the Old Testament, their sins were applied to their flesh, just like it is applied to our flesh now before we get born again. Leviticus 17.11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your what? For your souls. For it is the blood that maketh, maketh an atonement for the soul. Numbers 15.28 And the priest shall make an atonement for the what? The soul that sinneth ignorantly. When he sinneth by ignorance before the Lord to make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. So I don't want to take the easy way out anymore and say people were saved by looking forward to the cross it would be great if it were that simple but it just isn't we have to study God's book and rightly divide to come out with the right answer there are many differences between Old and New Testament salvation if you still can't believe this then ask yourself this question who was the first person born of God and no it isn't Adam if you believe it was Jesus Christ, then you're right. But by saying Jesus Christ is the first person born of God, then are you saying Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Daniel and Noah and Ezekiel were not born again? No, they weren't born again. Jesus Christ was the first person born of God. But I hope this study has maybe opened your eyes 
Like I got my eyes open when someone showed me all these verses like this and showed me people couldn't have been saved by looking forward to the cross. And if you have listened to this study and you still believe people were saved by looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament, that's fine. I'll still be your friend. I'm not going to say you're an idiot or you're a heretic or not a Bible believer or anything like that. We're supposed to respect each other. If you want to believe that, I'm going to respect you just like you should respect me. But I hope this study has helped you and that you will have an open heart and an open mind and pray about this before you just write it off. Thank <laughs> you.